Jeremy Collins, art director of Warcraft Rumble. Brendan Farrell, senior game designer on Warcraft Rumble. First one to ask, ask you guys, like, what's it been like seeing this game evolve over these last few months and a year? It's been, has it been a year yet? I think it's been, it's been over, almost. A over a year. Almost. No, almost. Uh, BlizzCon last year, first week of November. That's right. So coming up on it on a year. Uh, and then to answer your question, it's been awesome, honestly. Like, it's been really cool just to see, like, some of our older developed systems actually making it into the live game right now, like raids. Like, it's been very edifying just to see people enjoying kind of knocking down all the bosses on their way over to Ragnaros and just, like, how frustrated it, sometimes you can get because of how hard it is. And I'm really proud that we were able to kind of ship Sieges, too which is kind of like a like still a co-op experience, but a little bit less daunting than maybe a full on raid or where you, you know, you have to kind of plan the meta around what leaders you're going to use for each of the bosses. So it's been really cool, honestly. I mean, we spend so much time looking at player feedback and listening and responding to the community. It's been really cool to just to see people enjoying uh, the new stuff that we've been putting out. Yeah, I agree with everything Jeremy said. It's It's been so great. It's it's since launch, it's just been such a great time. We've come up with a lot of stuff and we love seeing how players react to that, how they use it. I've been saying a lot lately about like how, how fun it is to see players take stuff we've created and like do stuff with it that we didn't even expect. Um, you know, we just announced the, the Scenarian family and like there's tons of, of minis in there that I'm sure they're gonna have like emergent strategies that we haven't even considered yet. Um, and that's one of the great things about like having a live game is you put stuff out there and you have this really intelligent, dedicated player base who take these things and, and do things with them you never would have expected. Like we have Onu coming out, who's like a mobile deploy zone. So wherever he moves, you can place stuff around him almost as if it were unbound. And like, I can already think of some ways that that's gonna be really fun, but I'm sure once the players get him in their hands, they're gonna come up with like all sorts of, of fun, crazy stuff for them. Yeah, I feel like especially in a live service game, you can you can do all this testing, this closed beta, family and friends. You can even have hundreds or thousands of people testing, testing, testing. And then the second it goes out and you have 100,000 people or more playing the game, you get so much of that feedback. You talk about like when that happens, when you finally end uh, and how that how that works, is how that cycle works of getting the feedback and implementing it into the mobile game. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I mean, we, we have so many avenues for, for players to share their thoughts with us. We've been doing surveys. We have a Discord channel. Um, we, we read forum posts, we read Reddit, we read YouTube comments, you know, we're there looking at all of it, um, taking it all into account. And like you said, you know, when we when we test internally, you know, we have a really passionate team here at Blizzard um, who are all willing to, to play and give their feedback, but it's not the same as getting it out into the, the player's hands. The, the players are, they, they love the game and, and some of them are, I'd argue probably play it better than I do. You know, I've definitely gotten my butt kicked in PVP a few times um, <laughs> by some other players and like, it's just, it's so nice. It's so nice that, you know, to know that these players out there have, have the game's best interest in mind and know that they really just want to share what they're excited and passionate about. And they give us not just feedback, but also so many ideas. Like, it's so easy to, to open up Rumble and say, oh, I see, I see how this works. I see what these minis are doing. You know what would be great is one of these. Or you know what the game doesn't have yet is one of these. And like, that's that stuff is always coming to us and we love it. We, we never want to we never want to reduce the amount of that that we're getting. We can't do all of it instantly, of course, um, but we're always listening and we want to take it all into account and give players lots of new stuff, but also continue to improve the game, right? We want to keep coming out with quality of life improvements and, and new features and, and places in the game for players to go to keep having fun. And not to mention the combinatorics are just crazy. Like whenever we release, release a new mini, we release it with three talents. You can only experiment with so many different combinations of the 65 plus minis and leaders that we have in our game so it's really really cool once it gets out there and gets live and go oh my gosh i didn't know that that talent interacted with that talent that way and it's just it's very uh it's very cool to see the uh the the playing public experiment with the our sort game. of like abstract spreadsheet of possible interactions grows like exponentially with each new mini that comes out <laughs> you can definitely like yeah it's tons of fun. I think there's a misconception when there's something in the game that's that people want added or if there's something that needs to be balanced or fixed. You talk about like the process that you have to go through because a lot of people, I think it's like one line of code and they just type it in and it's done. But like there's testing, there's modding, there's making sure it works on all the different mobile devices, which is a big, huge pain. You know, there's how many how many phones are out there, right? It has to be out there, different screen sizes, the cameras in different places. So can you kind of give us a little bit of insight of how uh, why that takes so long to implement when you need to fix a bug or add a change or do something simple like change the UI or maybe even add a volume slider, like why that takes so long. Anytime we iterate on the game, it's a process, obviously. We, you know, like you said, you kind of 
put a lot of into the, the answer of what I would give you, honestly, is that we spend a lot of time in QA smoke testing different features, making sure that they're hardened and ready to go. But you're right, we have a lot of different platforms that we ship out to, mobile especially. I mean, just like PC, where you can have different hardware inside your PC that may interact with, um, you know, your game a little bit differently. Same thing with mobile. It's like, you know, with the number of Android phones out there, iPhone is a known quantity because everybody has the same I iPhone, but Android is kind of, um, you know, there are lots of different devices inside of that ecosystem and making sure that we uh, harden the game and fix all the bugs for each of those various devices is very important to us and making sure we're shipping, you know, it's part of what Blizzard does is we want to make sure we're shipping a quality product all the time. We, our fans and our players are the people that we are most apt to make sure are enjoying the experience and you know we, we don't feel good about shipping uh, anything that's less than that so it goes through quite a bit of rigorous testing on our end yeah the, the quality is really important to us i know that anytime as soon as something we've thought of something or as soon as we've seen a concept piece of concept art for something or a model for something the team gets super excited and we want to get it out to players as fast as we can uh, but we have to balance that excitement with the excitement of getting something that's really high quality and really enjoyable to players out. So there's a lot of factors, you know, we need to we need to build it, of course, which takes time, but then we also need to, to test it and play with it, see if it's fun and see if it does the thing we need it to do. We need to check to see, you know, is this what the game needs right now? Is this, you know, a strategy that's helpful or interesting to players? Is this something that they could make use of? And so there's just there's a lot of things to consider. And of course, all, the, all that thinking and processing takes a little bit of time, uh, but it is our goal to get stuff out to players as regularly and, and as often as we can because uh, we're excited about it too and we know they're waiting for it yeah to quote my mother when you rush that's when accidents happen that's the <laughs> <laughs> that goes triple in game dev <laughs> take your time Maybe make quadruple. sure it's smooth yeah <laughs> yeah measure what is it measure twice cut once yes yeah exactly yep that's it that's the one. Jeremy, you know, we've talked about this before when I interviewed you at the launch, but, you know, Warcraft is sending classic fantasy, uh, very heavily Warcraft 3 vibes because it's so stylistic. Um, what are some of the challenges when yeah, developing new models and new concept arts, putting your own twist on it so you're not just literally copying, uh, you know, what you've done before or like a footman soldier or like a grunt from the older Warcraft games? For sure. Yeah. I mean, the cool thing about our game is, is that we spent so much time kind of designing the visual identity of what the units look like and what the UI looks like, which we also kind of treat like another mini in the game. Like it's a character inside of our game, the UI. We want you to feel like you're inside of the Warcraft Rumble kind of arcade machine while you're interacting with the game. And so it was really important to us, like whenever we're making a new mini, we always look at, okay, well, where's the design of this going? Like what particular niche is this new unit trying to fill within either the families meta that we're releasing, like in the case of Scenarian right now, you know, they're very high defense, they're high resist, they're they're there as kind of like a, we have a lot of tanks in the Scenarian family to kind of absorb damage for your, your bigger damage dealers. Once we have figured out like where that niche for that mini fits in, either to the family or to the meta, you know, the, the larger character meta at, in a, at whole, um, we basically use that information to kind of decide, well, what, okay, well, what character fits best? And the cool thing is, is that design and art really collab on that. It's not like design dictates, uh, this is the next character that we're gonna release. We both kind of come to the table with our ideas about um, what this unit needs to do and what role it fulfills. And then we kind of come to like a collective decision. Okay, well, if this unit's a tank, we don't wanna use some like something that's like a smaller unit or somebody that has more spindly proportions. We definitely want something bigger and like looks like it has a larger health pool. And so a lot of the kind of decision-making for us has been made in terms of what we want to create. And then once we actually get to creating it, we have this great like catalog of characters that we've created up to this point. And we spend a lot of time making sure that um, we call it rumblefying the characters that when, whenever we rumblefy a concept from World of Warcraft or from Hearthstone, yeah, we're, we're putting our own special spin on things. Obviously these are miniature toys that have kind of come to life inside of this game that are playing around, but like we spend a lot of time, like say on the chipping of the characters, which is that kind of like loving, uh, like battle damage that they all kind of have from fighting each other, um, you know, inside of the, uh, the, um, the Warcraft Rumble arcade machine. So um, it's kind of like a collaborative decision, honestly. And, 
you know, our style has evolved over the years to, you know, we want to make sure artistically that there's a really quick read on all of our characters when you look at them. Because, I mean, you think about it, like mobile screens are small, right? And so you don't have the benefit of this, you know, I'm staring at a 32 by 9 ultra wide monitor right now. You have a lot of width to show off art, but when you're on a phone, you have to be very deliberate about kind of what you're presenting to the player, especially in a top-down game like ours. So the long-winded answer, but <laughs> that's how we go into thinking about making new characters for the game. Can you guys talk about what players can look forward to in season seven? Yeah, so in season seven, we have the the Scenarian family. Um, so Scenarian's been out conceptually, you know, we have, we have Fairy Dragon and we have Earth and Moon. Those are kind of teasers into the Scenarian family. Um, but players up until this point haven't been able to like equip a Scenarian leader and have a Scenarian army board and take Scenarian family to dungeons and all that stuff. Um, so part of the Scenarian family release happening in season seven is we're adding two leaders, uh, Scenarius and Onu. Um, and I won't bore you with too many details, but um, Scenarius is this really cool, uh, he's got like an AOE heal um, where he heals all allies near him slowly over time. Um, and that same uh, area also applies roots to enemies who approach for the first time. Um, so he's really good at like kind of sustaining a push and, and keeping map control going um, and giving your your minis a chance to deal with the enemy before they get too close. Um, Onu is a mobile deploy zone. I touched on him earlier. Um, you play him at one of your existing deploy zones and he starts pathing forward. And wherever he is, he gets uh, a box around him where you can play minis near him as if they were unbound. Um, so you can use him to get minis that normally have to lean forward um, up to you know wherever you're trying to fight, whether that's the enemy's tower or a, a big push that they're sending down or the enemy's base. Um, if you can get Onu there, you can then drop a whole bunch of minis there onto whatever that situation is. Um, so he's gonna be really cool. Um, we have Bog Beast, who's the Scenarian tank. Um, he's just this big swampy guy. Um, he's got a lot of health um, and his talents make him really difficult to kill. Um, he works really well with the other scenario and stuff. Um, we have Moonkin, who is classic. Um, anyone who's played World of Warcraft knows about uh, the Moonkin or Boomkin spec for druids. Um, does this big furry Alkin with horns, um, who does uh, alternating between Moonfire and a Hurricane AoE ability. Um, and then we have Ancient of War, who is uh, a new flexible cost mini. So when you play him, he uses all of the gold in your hand. So if you have three gold in your hand and you play him, he costs three gold. If you have 10 gold in your hand, you play him, he costs 10 gold. Uh, but based on his cost, um, he will grow in size and have more health and deal more damage. So if you're playing for 10 gold, he's this like massive tank. He's like bigger and, and more health than a molten giant. He's like really formidable and the enemy's got to do something to deal with him. But now you're out of gold. Um, or if you play him for two gold, for example, he's a tiny little guy. Um, <laughs> and he's like a quick, he's like a quick little tank you can just throw out there as a quick response to something. Um, and so the whole scenario family kind of operates on this kind of utility duality aspect um, and so that's that's a, a one really fun exciting thing coming in season seven 